happy morning fellas and ladies so it's a wall stroll on a nice crisp three degree morning um, and a little bit of an update for you on all things uh, macro and economic and the control structure what's happening and the parallels the parallels between where we are now 2018 and 1987, that's right, 1987 is actually the beginning of my uh, trading career. And I say trading very loosely. I would have to say more accurately in 1987, just buy and hold investing. Um, what's new? Well, the new things that uh, are around are the following. the dollar in 1987 and this actually I, I, I took a bit of inspiration from Max Kaiser here I don't watch a lot of his stuff but I just chanced on something and um, he brought he put this in front there and uh, credit to him so if, if someone seeded any inspiration I like to credit them and uh, Max was bringing this uh, aspect to the forefront in 1987 um, it was the last time that the US dollar admitted and actively spoke of a weak dollar policy um, or being comfortable with dollar losing value being comfortable with the dollar losing value um, and what does that essentially mean um, they openly express that they're okay with a just selfie stick um, openly express that they're okay with a dollar actually dropping in valuation um, and that is kind of like signaling a one-way bet to traders to go and beat it up um, it's jawboning now while there could always be a bit of a misdirect with that um, I'm always suspicious of the degree of deception entailed um, I, I would also say um, it could just be an active act to get some foreign currency uh, benefit and the last time they did this was in 1987 and it was in the beginning of the year in fact the dollars had the worst start to the year since 1987 so this is a worrying year to be precedenting on you're probably aware that the stock market has had this runaway bull market that just seems to have legs and legs and legs well beyond all those people that dare call it ever short because every time they have they've been murdered well we've had these there are differences you can't say in 1987 everything is the same let's focus on the similarities and then we'll focus on what's actually different the similarities uh, or the parallel for 1987 is dollar weakness after the the American indices had been at all-time highs and exceedingly strong dollar weakness um, was then called upon to keep juicing the stock market so what that essentially does is for the equities to maintain their global value remember you need to have the global hedge fund managers mind your money can be anywhere in any country in any equity if the um, the currency starts to devalue which uh, they've signaled they're gonna do then um, the equity has to go up just to hold its own value so it's the final little bull surge that is mainly built out of a currency effect that takes place next the final bull surge mainly based out of a currency effect that will take place next in other words you get uh, increase in value of the equities because in a relative valuation assessment the dollar is devalued and uh, the dollar's already had the worst start. So typically they'll jawbone after it's already true. It's been found, and this is a technique by the way, so this is the central bankers cartel, control structures cartel of best tricks. Talking a market down works best when it's already going down. In other words, you keep adding fuel to an already established fire. Um, talking a market down when it's going really high up can make you look foolish and actually um, can have a negative effect uh, even so the the jawboning as it's sometimes referred to jawboning a market 
takes real value once you've already got the trend and you can just accelerate it. In other words, you don't have the sufficient, jawboning on its own doesn't have the sufficient power to overcome inertia or turn something around, but it can add to the momentum of something that's already falling um, or rolling in one direction. It can just roll a little quicker. So the jawboning on the dollar will probably keep the dollar stocks goosed for a while longer. You've had your tax cuts. You're going to get your repatriation of all the corporatocracy, mega corps that have been benefiting on extremely, extremely cozy tax situation um, that sees them build up huge amounts of money that offshore that they never spend and then the president comes in and gives them a moratorium very low tax rate and they get to bring it all back in wouldn't you like to pay on that point um, instead of your 35 or 40 percent income tax keep it outside uh, a country for five six seven years and then just take 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 a moratorium that you know will come every 10 20 years for five percent wouldn't we all like to have access to that well that's what's happening um, on that side so you're getting the the parallel with the 1987 is then of course as many of you will be aware there was the 1987 crash which was epic and you actually lost 22 percent in a single day that's never been beaten by the way in a single day um, it was huge 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 collapse uh, and that was my baptism of fire in the investment world um, some time ago probably makes me feel a bit old I was a young man then but there's no escaping that it was some time ago um, and so what uh, my take on this is cheap dollar is the final card for keeping the full Ponzi going in terms of the equity side for a while. We've already surpassed maximum levels of margin lending debt um, some time ago. So people have just been goosing it. Corporations have been borrowing on the cheap. These are things that never applied in 1987. So let's talk about some of the differences. They didn't have 0% interest rate, which was the turbocharger that's going to kill the engine, but will give you a short-term performance boost to kill all other performance boosts. You know, you strap four turbos to an engine that was never designed for it, you'll get a bit more power for a short while, and then it's going to give up the ghost because it wasn't designed for it. And, you know, those that um, quad horsemen um, are coming home to uh, roosters. I mix all my metaphors here um, because you had this extreme low interest rates. Extreme low interest rates. You've got beneficial tax terms and I'm talking particularly the mega corps here that have benefited from this extensively. You get the mega corps um, that have got all this particular uh, value and you are now in territory that even 1987 can't touch. So with that all in mind, you have to bear in mind that this could set up the backdrop for a epic smashdown. So much so that um, it's getting me wanting to keep an eye on the equity side um, for the big short moment. And believe you me, the banking problems never went away. We also had a banking depression that didn't apply in 1987 and uh, that was never dealt with. Um, all that was done was we reinflated the same evils. So we've got a double whammy sickness that we've been pushing one side. That's all got to come out. So these are these are the um, the uh, real world economy equity issues that will be faced. Um, uh, we even had Barclays Bank CEO, and I call this, and this is an inter interesting part, and I'm going to talk about this, it might even make it to the heading of this YouTube clip, the establishment of alibi. You start getting a lot of control structure power heads establishing alibi. What do I mean by that? i tell you what I mean. We've had the Bank of International Se Settlements control structure par excellence in the center core, um, say um, these issues haven't been dealt with, the, the banks aren't stable, etc. They never dealt with the original issues. They make these quiet announcements that get a little bit of side play, just enough so that there's a footnote in history that they can say, we told you so. No one listened, we said. But they are the problem. And it's kind of like uh, me saying, 
hey, I'm a murderer, you know, I, I really confess, but uh, I'm warning you that there could be more murders again, um, you know, and then, then when it happens, um, I say, well, I warned, you know, I warned that. They are actually the murderer. It's no point saying they're murderers around. They are the control structure. They know all that they've done. You go watch the Osborne um, and our Canadian Bank of England's uh, crook uh, videos on YouTube about how um, they appointed him um, and you will see for yourself so these guys um, these guys are establishing alibi now we recently had Barclays CEO Barclays is sort of a, 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 a well-known flag bearer brand of retail banking and also of course got nose deep into with Barclays Capital and Bob Diamond's the casino element and he stripped God knows how much money out of um, Barclays Bank and then left it or was thrown out when the, the whole charade came to an end and has gone some other hedge fund to probably rinse and repeat the whole process um, but the Bob Diamond era um, casino banker per excellence um, he uh, he, he was he was literally the big successful man about town. Everyone talk about his package. You know, he used to take about 25 million a year, uh, and in certain years he took over 100 million pound um, on share options. Anyway, um, so Barclays is this banner bank. The CEO in divorce in Barclays said, "Yep, um, it's getting giddy out there, and uh, you know the troubles have, are, are going to come and." People keep talking like everything's okay, and it isn't, and you know, I'm warning. So all these CEOs of flagship banks are establishing alibi about what's coming. So we're going into 2018, and this is the backdrop. There is a real, real, real prospect that we have a mega dump that people haven't seen in history in terms of percentage route on equities. That'll trigger a whole bunch of equity-based lending issues that, um, that have seen immense amounts of margin trading. So the equity traders are, could get killed. Um, we've got the dollar that's doing all that it can to kill itself in a beggar thy neighbor policy to try and maintain its exports and heat in its economy and heat in its stock market at the expense of everybody else. This after Brexit uh, took the pound to new lows and people were concerned. You actually have Euro, which is an incredibly contaminated and broken currency, trading up against dollar um, for a sustained period. So we've got a very, very warped uh, currency. Uh, environment all designed around trying to maintain a charade that should have been allowed to die in 2000 um, was rewarmed with the housing bubble and even further lending and the subprime lending we've got subprime cars um, subprime students um, and re-inflation of the housing uh, bubble all to get shaken out and properly washed out you've got guys buying um, and I was in the States seeing this seven-year payments not five plus another two seven-year payments spending 85 grand on GMC uh, trucks um, worth and only buying 60% of the car <laughs> over that time period I mean this is mega leverage on depreciating assets where property is broadly held this is depreciating assets you've got property overextended so what am I saying, I suppose? I'm saying there's eerie parallels with 87, only on a much bigger scale, with things that have been pushed even further in terms of economic experiment, liquidity, and interest rates. So with all that as your backdrop, wow, it's a dangerous place out there. So bring it, bring it into, I suppose, a small comment on the crypto realm. Um, the dollar is weak and losing value and within all of that we also have Bitcoin um, that is actually losing value at the moment even in dollar terms so there's a proper deflation um, in Bitcoin and a re-rating after an, an epic moment is it over for cryptos no it certainly isn't but it's re-rating now could it be if it gets done re-rating it could be the one thing that inflates when every bank is under suspicion imagine now we had the banking crisis of 2008. The model I have seen, the model I have seen in 2008 was everybody panicked, no one knew, everyone ran to cash and gold and silver. 
which I'll come to as well, because both gold, silver, oil have all rallied on the weak dollar. So bear that in mind too. Um, but what could what I saw in Zimbabwe, um, for example, what we've seen in uh, Venezuela, is that Bitcoin, which with the internet and um, the uh, uh, the fact that it doesn't have intermediation and is essentially decentralized money, no banks, you don't have bank risk. The big problem with our payment system and money is that we have to have banks involved in it. If I want to keep money, store money, anywhere, anything that involves electronic money at the moment outside of crypto, it has to involve banks. And the bank's problems were never uh, solved. What's going to happen to crypto if it finishes its re-rating now? And I've got one final little uh, fall expected on uh, Bitcoin in balance and then I think there could be a possibility we start to um, bottom out. What will happen? Well Zimbabwe showed us. It's a microcosm. You might say that's there. No, when people don't know what to do um, and they don't have money at a time when um, Bitcoin was three or four thousand dollars the Zimbabweans were paying twelve and a half thousand dollars for um, a Bitcoin. Um, and it's not just Zimbabwe where that's happened, it's happened in South America too. And in fact, recently someone was commenting on that people in Bolivia were having record high uh, searches on Bitcoin Cash by Google Trends. So these guys, who knows what might be going down in that, uh, maybe some democracy being exported to Bolivia at some point. There's some news that'll come out. But the point being, people are looking at a crypto, which was actually Bitcoin Cash probably because Bitcoin itself is almost deemed too expensive. So quite fascinating um, times, quite fascinating times. This year is going to be a fulcrum year, fulcrum year. Do not be caught with all your money in the banking system. You'll be made to pay for all those that made huge money leveraged on the equity side. I'm going to start looking at potential options for inverted HVFs with my community on the equity side, particular individual equities and even um, indices. We're going to keep a close, close eye. It might not make it to um, August, September, October. Who knows? Um, but this is going to be a fulcrum year in the macro financial realm, I fear. Um, I fear for people that are underprepared and I think those that are properly prepared could entirely skip to a new level as a result. Anyway, it's a long old clip with a big old ramble, um, trying to get the, a better selfie stick up so that you can get a different angle and uh, have a look down on me. Um, I'll get the mic next time as well, the wind mic. I'm hoping this doesn't buffer too much. It's got a little gusty. So I'll call it quits there and I hope you found it interesting. I've got something else on Apple to come at you with on Francis's general ramblings about all things economic and corporatocracy. Speak to you soon.